meeting of uh, the Architectural Design Review Subcommittee, Wednesday, August 28th meeting. Uh, we have one set of minutes to approve, the minutes from June 12th. Um, do we have a motion? Yes, I will move approval of the um, DRSC um, minutes from, well now let's see, where are those minutes from? Uh, June 12th, 2024. I will second, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Passes unanimously and we have uh, two items of business today. First is architectural review of the following items. Public hearing project 24 100, development permit 24205, AT&T microwave antenna edition 401, Calle de los Molinos. Um, and do we have a staff presentation? Yes. Good afternoon. I'm Jessica Gatney, assistant planner with the planning division. Um, I'm with my applicant, Nima Honorbach. Yes, wow, that's yes. very good. Thank you. Better than how most people pronounce it. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I'm presenting on public hearing project 24200, a request to install a new roof mounted dish antenna and screening in the form of a new tower onto the existing AT&T telecommunications building. The proposed project is at 401 Calle de los Molinos, located on the northwest corner of Avenida Pico and Calle de los Molinos. It is zone Community Commercial 2, Coastal Zone, and West Pico Corridor Specific Plan. The proposed addition would be located on the second floor roof on the northwest portion of the existing building. The proposed dish antenna would be surrounded by 12 foot by 12 foot fiberglass reinforced panel architectural screen with clay roof tile to match the existing roof. The proposed screening roof has a height of 8 feet, which is under the total 45 foot top of roof height limit. The screen is proposed to be white to match the existing building. The north elevation will be seen from Calle de los Molinos heading south towards Avenida Pico. The east elevation is along Calle de los Molinos as well. In the south elevation, the most prominent facade fronts Avenida Pico. Uh, the proposed project is somewhat compatible with design guidelines. Although staff has concerns that the proposed tower does not integrate adequately with the existing building. Um, the applicant has worked with staff to modify the design so far. They've lowered the roof from a 10-foot addition to an 8-foot addition, which proportionately is more aesthetically pleasing. But staff wants to explore additional options to improve the design, including the potential to co-locate the equipment. Ideally, staff would like to see the new antenna co-located within the existing tower if possible, or possibly on an adjacent property. The, outlet, the outlet's parking structure was a suggested site. Alternatively, if that's not feasible, staff would like to explore ways to enhance the proposed tower to appear more functional. Towers are typically purposeful, such as an entrance, a bay, stairway, balcony, or veranda. In the image, Please note that the existing tower on the north side of the building, it serves as an entrance and has purpose. It fits well with the design of the building. Staff recommends to modify the design of the proposed tower, uh, and we have developed some possible alternative designs, including overall mimicking the look of stucco on the fiberglass panels to match the existing stucco material desired. Uh, potentially modifying the tower and the existing facade by adding, adding vines within the existing arches on the south elevation to give the illusion of an interior courtyard, or potentially relocating the tower to the perimeter of the building and designing it to intim uh, imitate an entrance. Staff is seeking a recommendation from the Design Review Subcommittee related to design and architecture. Thank you, and please let me know if you have any questions. I do. Um, with this picture right here, so can you just walk me through 
where the new equipment, the applicant wants it with yes. your cursor? Sure. If you look on the site plan for you here, which would be approximately... Yeah, that's my question. Right, right there, here. Right. Okay. Yes. And so they just want to put a stucco enclosure, like fiberglass enclosure to simulate stucco with a tile roof over it. Well, like a shed roof? We haven't discussed the stucco. Oh, okay. Finish yet. Right. But so, so right now, um, you know, with a correspondence with our client and how we've done it and on most of our projects and even in, in you know cities that are you know have these um, site sensitive issues, um, we use a fiberglass reinforced panel that is um, similar to a stucco. Um, we would make it to match to the greatest extent. So they have pebble textures, you know that that would look very similar. Or, or so even basically, it's just going to look like. And then what's the roof? Is there going to be a roof on it? Yes, sir. Like. And it would be the uh, red clay tile. Yeah, like a shed guys, roof, though. I think San Clemente goes through the the, the gladding being a manufacturer. So I noticed that in the design guidelines. So if we need to go through a specific okay. manufacturer. So basically, it's just going to look like a big shed on top of the roof. Correct. No? Or it's, it's a hip roof. It will have okay. a hip roof. Okay. Oh, hip roof. Okay. A hip roof, though, yes. With terracotta okay. tiles. Okay. So it looked a little nice. It looked like a little house on top of the thing. Mm -hmm. Instead of a shed. Yes. How many antennas you got in there? There's, there's going to be one. We're proposing one in there. One big one? Yes. How tall is it? It would be uh, six foot max. So, and why don't you want to put it in the existing tower? Um, we've been told per field verification that it is uh, it cannot physically fit. Can't fit? No. And there would just be far too much involved to make it fit. And I don't even think you can. But <laughs> you'd have to take it off the exterior materials, etc., to get it in there. Okay. To get, I think, the radio waves to work properly. Is that correct? That's the other component: is uh, getting it, getting the design to work. So that you know, location that we're proposing is a very specific location to make the antenna work with where it's going to stretch to. And what's the top of the roof? The apex of the roof? How tall would that be? It would be. It was ten feet, but um, per my discussion with with Jessica, she felt like, or with speaking with you know the staff, they felt that we can uh, lower it. So we lowered it by two feet. So eight. So it's feet. now eight feet. Okay. And how wide is it going to be? Uh, it's one hundred forty-four square feet, so twelve by twelve. Got it. So, Barb, what do you think? Um. When I drove the, the site, it, it's not an easily visible. That's location. my yeah. This part not, of town is not. When this yeah. was done, when this building was done, it was an attempt at Spanish colonial revival at best. But it was one of the first ones we've ever had, you know, uh, particularly in this area. And uh, um, in character with the building, I think it's probably pretty good. If it was a new building, I'd probably would say. It needs revision uh, that have been suggested, uh, but on this building, I think it. it uh, I would want to make sure that the um, we're careful about the roofing material. Uh, you're going to have to be up pretty high to see that. I mean, we don't get this view from anywhere. I don't believe. Um, uh, I'm not opposed to it even being pulled back a couple of feet from the parapet? Because you're not building on the parapet, correct? The existing parapet? You're sticking it down behind it? Uh, on three sides, yes, but uh, we're, we are using the parapet as kind of an integrated element. So, I mean, that's something that we would get into. With okay, no, it, it, it's not a big one. Um, now, we've used uh, the FRP panels in the past. Um, and with pretty good success, but uh, I don't know the name of the product. So I, I would want to make sure that it's comparable or the same as we've used in the past. Um, it is the same material for the um, roof-mounted faux chimney project that you reviewed uh, a few months ago with John Champa on South the Down on South, yeah, okay. Because we don't really have a sample that we can review here uh, and um, the fascia and all it's not really called out 
I would hope it is planned the same or similar to what's on the building. Correct. We use. Um, it's not really detailed. We we went off of as built. Okay. Uh, Try to make it make it in, in alignment with you know whatever's there. And I mean it, it's like I say it's uh this is tucked pretty far back there. I I, I think the planner has uh, applied the design guidelines um, very well and tight, but I think since this isn't a new building or even a great example where this would be a distraction, yeah, that I think it's fine. Okay. okay. And we don't need to do any anything to the to what they're proposing because it's probably not that visible. It's just going to blend in. Yeah, it's my feeling it'll disappear. Do you feel like it's even though it's just like this little pup pup thing, you know, on the corner there? So it's gonna. My, so what you're saying, Jessica, is gonna kind of go like like there. Is this yeah, I mean, it's, it's gonna appear like we've done on things. Uh, that's an elevator. Gotcha. Top it won't look out. It won't look out of place or anything. No, uh, not okay. in this building. Okay. On on other buildings, yes, I think it would. I just, I just, my only worry was that it was just going to look like this random, like, odd thing up there, and, um, but. I mean, it was what we went through on the uh, outlets and all, if it was one of those buildings or something, yeah, I'd be concerned about it. Okay. But. Uh, I don't think the district on the is in, it's not really in the, uh, uh, Entry corridor. It's not at a gateway location. It's not, it's not really a, a gateway. It's, it's close. Kind of, it's about like we get on McDonald's it's, or something. It's about it's a half a mile from the view corridor, but it's not in the view corridor. Uh, and I'm glad uh, um, it was a concern that we've got a, a view corridor down Pico, but this isn't it, yeah, it's further involved in it. You've got a crest over the rise before it really becomes. A, I think that's probably where the arrow start from is mm -hmm. on that crest at uh, it starts I think it starts point. about a quarter mile Mr. Most west actually straight so, down yeah do you because uh, I I personally would rather see this than on uh, then start to clutter the outlet mall parking structure which is not a nice parking structure with plants and nice paint I'd rather not start attaching a bunch of antennas on that thing I this is better than that, I think. Do oh, I think so, and I think the public's perception of these things and uh, uh, something that can't be concerned is health, safety, and welfare that these things cause. And this is pretty remote, and it's not really an occupied building per se. It's um, unmanned. It's an unmanned building. Yeah, it's an unmanned building. Yeah, it's so an AT&T building. I'm happier with it there than I am. It's like a, it's like one of your switching centers or something. Right. There's just it's full of equipment. Yeah. And you know you have the occasional person that so, does maintenance on it. You know, I think the public yeah. would appreciate that too. Do you think you're going to be a, 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 a doing more antennas? Um, as far as I know, it's this one, and there's another location, but it's it's a microwave system. Oh. So they um, interact with one another to send. But not on this building. Not on this building. This so is I was just going to say, if you thought you were going to lease some of the roof space out to some of the other carriers, or you're an expanded, then I would have a different, maybe I would orient it differently if you're going to make it a lot bigger. But if you don't think so, then maybe the orient. So you're going to orient it so the, it goes this way, right? Not. Well, it's square. It, it's. It's, it's 12 by 12, it's, it's a square. It's uh, 12 by 12, but we're, again, we're open to hearing if you back a ways from oh, sure. actually the street. So looking up at it, you won't really see it. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. And that's going to give you the coverage you need, that location. For sure. Okay. Do you have right now, it's a tough look. Which uh, vendor are you? at and Okay. Jonathan, do you what do you feel about it? What's your feelings? Well, just a question. Do you um, have flexibility in the location on that roof, or is there a specific reason why you chose the identified location? When I when I saw the diagram, I actually asked AT&T the same question. 
and it, it is designed for that location. Um, not to say that we're not open to you know, adjusting where it is, but I, I know the existing tower is not an option due to its uh, limited space. And then um, yeah, as far as moving it north or moving it the east or uh, you know, kind of uh, fine-tuning it, um, I, I think we're open to that. But um, I know for sure where it is right now, there's a very good reason why it is to um, create the path sure. that it needs to get to where it needs to get to. Um, so on that second story roof element, though, you have some flexibility if you were to maintain the height of the antenna. Um, I, I can I can share it with my client um, and see if there there is other. You know, that's the other thing is that you know, when I speak with their engineer, it's like, oh, we got to redesign it and stuff like that. So again, um, if you have any suggestions, we can share it with them. Um, but um, just so that the um, committee knows where it was placed there for a very good reason, so that it is designed at its optimum for to create the bandwidth that it, that they hope <laughs> it, that's what, why it's located where it is. Because uh, you know, if it were in, let's say, we were in the corner, um, we could try to make it an architectural feature of the facade. It's going to have to be so much bigger than what it is to really make it look right. Uh, I thought about that and I just thought, you know, this thing's, you're going to see it once and you're going to forget about it. Mm -hmm. well, where were you going with your thinking, John? Oh, then, this. Same as Bart. Okay. Um, you know, if, again, the, the goal for these facilities is to, like, uh, that the layman thinks that, like, that has a purpose. That's a bell tower or that's yeah, a clock or right. something of that sort. So, um, when possible, avoiding the roof hats. That being said, like this is set back off the street a significant distance, so it's not going to be a, a prominent feature. I think the prime couple things. I think the primary viewpoint that, from the public's perspective would be people coming out of Los Molinos, so people at this stoplight. Uh, there's not a lot of um, tree cover in this location, so they would be able to. They have a pretty direct line of sight to the facility. I, I think that does is a great down though, right? You're yeah, it's pretty low. But for the most part you would be seeing the tile roof and the tile is our standard tile. So that material, I'm not really that concerned about the, um, wrapping up the line of thinking of like having it be something that seems intentional. They, they already have, I'm assuming a gutter uh, at this location and kind of this corner element that probably isn't too far off of the dimensions of the tower. It's so, actually a little bigger, I think. So, so if they were to extend kind of that visual square, up eight feet, it might seem um, to be more intentional. So you're saying move is that a, play, a location you would uh, consider? Um, do you have a pointer or maybe some, something that we could? Yeah, so, well, on the screen, this corner here, so it's kind of the, the northwest corner. Right there. Yeah, so on your sheet A1. Uh, I mean, it is significantly larger, Bart. Yeah. I'm seeing it's almost double the length. So. Oh, yeah. I, I don't think we could have gone the whole thing. Yeah. Um, That's the, in blue, kind of the corner area. And then, you know, make it look like an element. And I, I think that's probably architecturally um, an easier place to incorporate it. Now, where are you actually boxed in blue? Um, are you indicating here? Where no, no, no. On the roof itself. Within, right here. Okay. And you wouldn't have... There's that little pop-out that could be inside of it. You were originally asking it to go here? Here. Yeah. Yeah, here. So you could go just... In that last square, area. that area. Oh, right there. Now, would the committee be okay with um, my client maybe just giving a brief description on whether or not, or, or why it's proposed where it is? Kind of elaborate. Sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We're not trying to be. I, I can't uh, believe I just what it. Be sure here. So, so Mac, uh, you're uh, hearing that the board talk about where uh, they might propose where we where we you know might propose the uh, dish with the enclosure. Um, 
you know, was there, other than what I stated, is there a very specific reason as to where it's located right now? Yes, it's the, all their equipment is right below the antennas being stuff. That's the only available space in the building on the second floor. That's why they were going in that location. Right. Um, so where they're where they're suggesting, um, it's it's actually still above the second floor. Okay. They're, 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 I didn't they're need that the left or right if need be, but. That's that's essentially that's yeah, essentially okay. what that's essentially what the committee is. Then it'll look more like a tower. Right yeah, either of those. Just extend that right, wall up. And because of the equipment that's uh, that they need, that's that this dish is going to provide uh, is is right below where it's at right now. So we can, but we can go left and right a little, but we can't go way on the first floor or somewhere else. It's got to stay on the second floor. Right, It'd still be on the rooftop, but it would be uh, on the opposite corner, uh, further south. Or I'm sorry, further north, but south on the planet. Yeah, I don't see a problem. Uh, honestly, I, I'm, I'm trying to remember, but I don't see a problem to move it to the far corner. Okay, as an option. So as well, an option, yes. I mean, I'll discuss yeah, it again. I'll that's what I'm the thinking. Uh, conditions are so they can move to the restrooms and stuff like yeah. that. Also, on the corner, the existing uh, areas so that we don't want to be over the restrooms because we don't run conduits. Uh, below that, so but we can take it as far as to the you know, to the north. To the, the north is the uphill, correct? If I'm correct, if I'm wrong, that's where the end. Correct. Is. He's but, right. That yeah, it is does. Closer to that is fine. And we can get it as close as possible if need be. But he's saying there's bathrooms below. There's bathrooms below, and there's um, equipment that we want to be able to tap into. So yeah, we want to stay away from. Well, they can run. They, they can run the conduit there. It's just, yeah, but um, this is where um, I'm thinking. Here's where it is. Yeah, I think not even here, but here. So where it looks it, like an extension of a tower. Yeah, because it already projects yeah. out just that little bit. Possibly that location right there. And maybe you could just make it. It looks like the proportions are about right. Would it still be the same little build? Like what? What did you call it, Jonathan? Uh, Roof path or something? What did you say? Oh, yeah. Would it be more like, can you make it more to match this, like over here, or is it actually going to be like a tw the 12 by 12 is more of a building? Well, if you can get the square that he's got in in that place, it would be pretty close to be. Because what it, this to me looks like it's like probably like not that far off of 12 by 12. So it does not have to be rectangular. Yeah. You know, you know, we can we can space it differently. Um, we just need clearance around the, the dish. Okay. So this is a development permit, so it's going to come before the PC, right? Uh, this is uh, so this or is we'll process to the zoning administrator. Okay. Sorry. Okay. And uh, if if we with the report I've read and uh, Jonathan's input. If you can do it there and follow their direction as far as the architectural character, I'm good with the zoning administrator. Okay. Making yeah. the final call. I think it's so, it's back there far enough. It's, uh, yeah. I don't see a big critical error that's going to be um, of public concern. Okay. Or do you think, it, since it projects out, that as you're driving westbound on Pico, you're going to be or will this building hide it? But since it's projecting out, I know it's hidden here, but since it's projected out, would it be more visible? But it's so far further behind. As you're looking up, it's back here. You're going to be probably just seeing the top anyway there, okay. too. No, okay, so the visual sight lines are not changed. Okay, then yeah, let's move it forward. I, I would be willing to just yeah. make a motion and you know set with, send this to the ZA with our comments. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think Jessica did a good job um, applying the yeah, thank guidelines you. to it. Yeah, thank you very and, much. Um, I think she'll do a good job. So Great. I'll go ahead and move Thanks, uh, that this move to the ZA with our comments. Great, thank you. And I you want to? Do we need a vote or is that? No, yeah, no, no votes needed. Okay. Well, <laughs> yep. Okay. So just to clarify for your purposes, um, this item uh, was required to go through this step to get feedback from design review. Design review doesn't vote or make a decision on the item. So now uh, you'll move forward to your public hearing. So Jessica will coordinate with you on the timing for that. We'll have to do noticing in advance of that meeting. And she'll relay the feedback of design review 
Uh, you'll have time to connect with your team on uh, you know, the items that were raised, location of the restrooms, et cetera, and whether those pose any issues. Um, and that'll be addressed within Jessica's report to the zoning administrator. Perfect. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Jessica. Do you have any questions? You okay? Um, yeah, I think we're okay. We just have to um, kind of see and assess what's below yeah. it, and then we can get back to you on that as get, well. Get with your team and make sure it's okay with you guys, and okay. if it's not, come back with close as you can okay. that works for your team. Okay, and it sounds like we can, um, just uh, what Max stated was that we can move it left to right, so I think we should be okay. Just uh, we'll probably do a quick field verification. Make sure. Oh, sure, of course. In the way it sounds. sounds like a plan. Okay, thank you so much for meeting. Okay, next item is new business. We have none, so we're on to old business. Yes. And, and I think we lost our applicant. We did. So I, if you don't mind, give me a moment to see if he That's is fine. in the hallway. Thank you, Jessica. Take care, gentlemen. Bye now. Is he out there? Yes. Good. Okay, Whoa. next item of business, old business. Amendment old to business. site plan permit 2134, Coastal Heritage Permit 2135, Shoreline Dental 1409, South El Camino Real. And Jonathan, you are the planner on this one. Yeah, so this today. is today. <laughs> uh, this one has been approved by the Planning Commission previously, and uh, there's just a couple quick exhibits here. So. Uh, Corey is um, uh, nearing completion of this project, um, long in the making, uh, and the request is for a change in the material. Um, and the um, original is shown in figure two, which has kind of that orange color. It was originally a stone. Um, and Where's that on the plan here? I, uh, so look at the next image on the next page. Figure two, the orange color. On the bottom? Yes. And on the bottom, on the yeah. second story? And that's existing, what's been approved. Correct. That's the existing. And is approved. it literally orange? It, it is an orangish color, yes. Okay. It's kind yeah. of a terracotta ish. Yeah. Um, and is it tile? What is it treatment? It's a stone, it's a stone material. Stone. Yeah. Okay. So the request is to replace that and, and have just a consistent uh, stucco finish. Um, so this is one uh, amendments go through. Uh, one of three paths through city planner approval or zoning administrator or planning commission and uh, I'd like to get your feedback on okay. whether you think this is a significant change or has potential for public impact or concern and go from there. Okay. Um, I'll jump in. I, I do think it's a, um, a takeaway from the building. I think the building looks far more rich and authentic with the um, wainscoat down there. It's also a heck of a good maintenance issue that painted stucco down to sidewalks just takes a beating, especially even in landscape areas. And it's a more durable material. Um, so I'm inclined to say because we are in a gateway, it is, um, we've really held the three other properties on that intersection to a high standard that uh, I'm inclined to start the discussion by saying at the moment, I think it's a uh, better solution to have that. Okay. Can, I, can I just ask you some questions? Like, Absolutely. Why do you guys want to change it? We think aesthetically. Uh, you don't like the look of it? No. Okay. And is that when you got the the actual sample materials and then you just got, you just didn't like it? We're having some problems sourcing uh, to be able to make the cuts around some of the corners and different things. Um, so is it is it the fabbing and, and, and application or is it the aesthetics? It's mostly aesthetics. Okay. Did you, is it the cost? I mean, there is a there is a cost associated with it. I wouldn't say that it's cost prohibitive, but it's not cost drive. No, the decision is not cost driven. No. Would you say that you would be open to retaining the effect and maybe changing changing it to a different style or different color? Like, would you be open to some alternative? 
to retain the feature? Uh, maybe. Okay. <laughs> I, I'd have to kind of know what that meant, right? But well, I'm just trying. That's why I'm trying to ask you what sure. what the what the motivation is. If the motivation is, hey, we we don't like how this design when it comes to the implementation, yep. how it's gonna look now that we're here and we kind of see, yep. we don't like it. Right. But the concept of having an architectural feature, we're all for, we just don't like this one. I, I maybe, really think the simplicity of it, from an aesthetic standpoint, is something that for us is, is what we desire. Um, at the time that we went through this step, uh -huh. we didn't know because the, the buildings at across the street and at Santiago didn't have, they weren't up and we weren't part of the design process to see that they didn't have any of that, that those are flat finishes to the bottom. Um, and we're not actually even up against the sidewalk uh, in the way that those buildings are. Um, I think that what we had done, because we had been through this design review subcommittee a couple times to no avail that uh, basically we got, we our feedback was, hey, go look at Starbucks, go look at Valero, and pretty much copy <laughs> what the design elements that were there. Um, in talking with Jonathan after the fact more recently, a lot of the reasons that, at least what was explained to us uh, for the beating purposes is with drive-throughs and cars, and with the, uh, the car wash at the Valero, with cars literally driving within inches of the building, that that was a point of emphasis to have those there uh, were removed off of both the sidewalk uh, and the cars in terms of how the parking is oriented. We're not going to be near uh, some of those vehicles that are passing. And we feel like just the other buildings that have gone in, uh, catty corner to us, slightly, you know, a block down on, on uh, Santiago that have the flat finish, you know, aesthetically, we're, we're much more drawn to them and we feel like it would continue a consistent look in the block that's already been started. Um, my thought there is we don't want all buildings to look exactly alike. Um, that was something that was always unique about this one and I know there were discussions about anchoring this thing uh, to the ground so it looked like it um, was anchored to the ground because it, we've got a uh, basically a one-story element, where on those we've got two-story elements going up. Um, I see the problem with uh, all the curved corners. Are you the architect? <laughs> no. No. Uh, the architect. you the project should... manager? Nope. What are you? I own the, the building. You're the building owner. Okay, okay, cool. Yeah, okay. okay. should have known uh, how to accomplish this with those rounded and uh, chamfered corners, and it can be done. And it's not the easiest thing in the world to do. I think um, that the architect is finding that uh, that the contractor is having trouble finding somebody that's able to execute the vision, and we're worried that they're going to cause it's going to be more. It's not going to be the vision that he had for it. Is that customer normal, Bart? Doesn't the architect kind of take the responsibility for her? Oh, absolutely. Making and sure they, that it can be engineered correctly? Know where the materials are available, too, because you're designing yeah. with uh, samples and whatnot. I mean, ultimately, is the architect kind of the accountable one? Like, And if the builder can't do it, it's like on the architect why that's it, the... It, it's his responsibility yeah. to design something that can be built. Absolutely. Do you share that at... Philosophy. Um, What's your first name? I'm Corey. By the Corey, way, Corey. Yeah. Do you feel? Does that make sense to you? When uh, you're talking no, to no, architect, I understand are you kind of? There's been, you know, obviously in a project this scale, there's been a million back and forth. Yeah. That, and I'm copied on all the the different communications that that they have back and forth with one another. So the issue is the round, the rounded corner. I think so. I think. Well, if you look at the floor plan, the corner we're looking at in, in this uh, page two. Has a rounded corner and it's chamfered back into the windows. Um, and uh, using stone or cast material. Yeah. Uh, they, they can do it. Is uh, that custom? Uh, to yeah, get, to make, match the radius? Uh, it's, he, he, he went with the cast. 
Yeah. Okay. In, in terms of so that, that. They, they should be able to do it. Um, another alternative without changing anything drastically would be to use a coping at the change of the two materials on a paint material. Paint it. Would give the same appearance. I would not be in favor of just a painted surface with no separation between yeah. the two, but if there was a coping you used, which could be the same, uh, either concrete uh, is usually what's used to cast, um, applied to the stucco. They could use a, um, see you're just wrapped now, right? Uh, yeah, I think they're doing the first layer. They're doing the scratch. Okay. Um, with a foam coping, which is what you've got on the top of that wall, um, that's how they're going to build that thing, I'm sure. Uh, they also make a coping you could put down there, just a, a simple... Uh, More of a straight you know, Like a chair railing, but... It, it, it looks like a chair railing. It'd be, you know, something like that. This being the ground down here. Kind of like molding. Um, and it's chamfered on top, so water runs off it rounded and it can either have two angles and that's and it could a be a different contrasting color and that would be stuccoed um, oh really it's stuccoed okay it's tough stuck it over then they come back and paint the lower section the color um, and that would give us the exact same character here but it would be a different design so each building has some uh, of its own character I was wondering if uh, this is, we're just talking. Uh, hey, this yeah. is not imposing stuff on you. No, we're just fine. talking because we want you to have an awesome, be beautiful building. As so we're I. just talking. As do I. You know the tile inlay in the arch? Is that a feature, Bart, in your opinion, that would be, if it were carried instead of? The tile inlay in the arch. The, the tall part oh, in, in the arch. arch. Or a complementary tile, or no? Is it not? It's it's. It was supposed to be a, a separate character on that tile. I just didn't know if tile would could be used as a replacement. It might get a little busy. Too compared busy. To what we originally um, okay originally did. Um, the idea was just some kind of a darker contrast. It doesn't mm -hmm. have to be orange. It could be like a, a light brown or. A oh brown. no! You just stay the same color. Same color. Yeah. I mean, we've gone through the process. Um, uh, I'm just trying to get at Corey like that. that. If you that don't like be, the color, I need to. That's what you needed to tell us. What? Yeah, definitely, definitely find it too orange. You don't like the color. Correct. Okay. I mean, I don't want Corey right. to hate his building. <laughs> well, that's something we should uh, talk to the architect about uh, because we've got a color board that uh, has been approved. Yeah. And. Uh, I think your, everybody was happy with it. We discussed it. We looked at it. Um, Bart, do you think we should continue really this with the architect? Okay, to be, yeah. Well, I will. I will. Uh, it's this stone cast right here. Yeah, I. Am, you think that's too orange? It kind of looks like a sand color. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think your rendering colors a little Maybe off. Maybe the print off. Yeah. So I will. Yeah, I'll comment quick. Um, I did review previous to this request uh, a request of an alternate tile style. Yeah. So it's it's still a Spanish tile, but it is a different color scheme. When you say tile, oh, this one. For the six inch okay. square, that, that, that one is no longer offered. It's, so it is more of a, um, if I recall correctly, like a grays and blues tone that's in the... Okay. Well, we want to stay in the same character, so we almost need to see that to, if we're going to make it. So we're trying to be complementary to this tile right here. I think that's what the original color, why it was selected, would maybe that it was because of the now, orange in this Matt, This is complement. But, but now that tile is no longer. You're not using this tile. We're not. Oh. They don't carry it any longer. Do you? Yeah, do you have a photo by chance of that tile? Okay. And that was only being used in that major arch. Correct. Bart, do you have okay. examples oh. in town where oh, this though. banding is applied? Oh yeah. Although um, I believe we're in the planning commission for a sign, you are a sign variance, yeah. And I think that we're going to incorporate the same tile into a uh, monument sign as well. So that would be another place on the property. Okay. It would be okay. there. So I think to make that decision, we need to see it. Um, yeah. And what I would recommend, 
you got to get that. Um, talk to your architect and see if. Uh, oh, that's that's nice. He knows the coping. Okay, that, that's a uh, that's kind of blue standard. Blue design, and yeah. yellow is in there, right? Correct. Um, and get the. We're not supposed to design it. Right. For you, uh, we should get a color palette um, from your architect uh, to make these changes. Um, and to keep it moving since if you're going to, if your architect thinks he can find, uh, apparently he doesn't think he can find the material either, or is it just the contractor? That's I, the think he, I think uh, he does not have confidence in the contractor's ability, and, uh, I, ability, I game, ability yeah. to execute on the vision that he has for it in terms of sort of saying, you're going to need to get him out here to measure the radius and create a, a foam template to then create the custom. And, okay, and so was getting using a cast panel. Then. Yes, was getting a very blank look by the uh, contractor yeah. and was like, well, usually maybe the this... cast casting company will come out and actually do the on-site measurement, um, not the general. Um, well, none. So I understand. I guess there's a lag time too, a delay in okay. the fabrication. So. That's why I gave the other alternative, but I think we need um, to find out from the architect his choice of colors, and we can bless it rather than trying to pick one. Oh yeah, we should them. be picking anything. So um, I just was th trying to get to the bigger question part, which is Corey would like to just delete it and just go match the building across the street. And your feeling is you'd rather not delete I, it. I, I, I mean, we've been through the process. We've been through the public comment because this went through planning commission. Mm -hmm. um, and if we're going to do this outside of being going back to that process. Modify the publicly approved plan. Yeah. We need to make it as simple a change and minor a change as we possibly can. For, yeah, for implementation sake, not wholesale deleting stuff. That's what you're saying. Yeah. I see. So I, I think if we want to keep this without having to deal at the commission level. I mean, the other option is to bring the whole thing back to a public hearing and have your architect pitch no, the change. I, mean, I don't think any of us really want to see that happen. The, the time lost yeah. in yeah. terms of what, where we're at with the project is... So you, is and he should be able to turn it around very quickly. And I think if you want to take it, you go to ZA. So, well, this change or, or staff or, would probably would approve it, it if staff he staff said yes. Yeah, right? I, it could go one of those two directions. I mean, what, what I'm hearing is that if uh, that the coping and, and a color that's consistent with the tile could be a um, an acceptable substitute, mm -hmm. um, and and that. So, from my framework, I would say then there's no public impact or concern, and that can I be agree. a staff level approval. But if they want, if they would like to go in a direction other than that, such as the um, proposal of eliminating, just eliminating that element, that that would need to go back to a public hearing. Not that you would necessarily oppose. Uh, that direction, but that you um, do feel like that is a significant change from what the public I, process. For transparency is. purposes and the yeah. whole thing that would have to be looked at. So, Jonathan, you're, what you're saying is um, coping, and then maybe when you it, say coping, we're talking what you scratched like here. That. Okay. Yeah, like a phone thing and yeah. this contour like you, that. You're, you're yeah. the, so, in terms of where that goes in the installation process of the stucco, what? Um, it, where where in the steps of the three steps of the stucco? It, it um, is glued to the scratch. So Before right the now. Brown coat? Hmm? Before the brown coat? Mm -hmm. Because they'll, they'll put the uh, color coat over, but you want to make sure that they butt it. Well, some guys have put it over the brown coat. Okay. I, I've seen that done. I, I prefer to see it, it embeds in one to, more layer yeah, of to the scratch coat. Um, then it's got the brown coat up to it, and then uh, color coat right over it. Okay, uh, and that's what you're, that's exactly what you're doing up yeah. here. That's where you Get are right work. now. <laughs> that's where you are that's right what, now. What you are no, doing? No, absolutely. I, I'm and so, so it'll occur at the same time and in the same process as that is. 
Fair enough. Can I, Bart, can I ask you one other question? Mm -hmm. Do you feel like on the this, this second story, it, is that visible from the street? Would this be, what if he were to delete it here? Would that make a difference on the second Once story? Again, I would let the art. Well, you're going to see it coming down the ramp. Is it a big deal? I'd let the architect make the call on that. So would you be open to letting that come just be painted straight down but and just kind of hold, on the first floor. hold on the first floor? Well, this, five, this is called Fipon makes this stuff. And it, it's not expensive at all. It's more expensive for the plasterer to work around it. Oh, there you go. Is that Fipon? Yeah, that um, looks like... With a uh, P? Fipon? Casing. F-Y-P-O-N, I think, is one of the manufacturers that we used to use. I mean, they could be out of business. I've been retired long enough. Because <laughs> I like the rounded. I don't want it to be a problem where it's like a dirt magnet, you know, and then you've got a power wash to build it more often. But... Um, I was just trying to help Corey out if, because he's under the gun here, and I'm just trying to think if it really mattered on the second floor. Maybe that's an easy one to just say. To, to I appreciate that. you saying that. To be to be fair, like you know, that would be helpful. But at, but at the same time, if they got to wrap the first floor in it, then Might they're going to have to do the second floor, okay. and it would get some consistency in the layering. Yeah. Okay. Um, because it's it would it would either be kind of an all or nothing. Okay, would, gotcha. Because if the the problem would persist on both. Is there parts, any color tie? Okay. Jonathan, were you kind of getting at, or I'm just asking the question of Corey? Sure. Maybe this material's not good, or you don't like the color. If you now you have a new tile, would you are you are you suggesting that he go back to the architect and just pick some different colored material here? That maybe you like better. Uh, again, I th I don't th the uh, the curves are the problem. The curves are the the change. architect was willing to and had actually in, uh, started a conversation with Jonathan to see if we could just pop out with some foam to give it some three dimensional some look dimension and then yeah. paint and then paint the Underneath stucco the yeah but but pop out. And Jonathan had felt like that that didn't create enough of a change that if I'm making that you felt good enough to give a yay on that or that we wanted to come here for the yay on that. Well, yeah, I think come here. So that we, would be, we appreciate you bringing it. Here. Yeah, and that would be a, similar to the coping where Correct. it's uh, they're looking at um, essentially that bottom uh, area popping off yeah. uh, and, a few inches. And so that's what our architect had proposed. So it gave that three-dimensional so look. And you've got the other... But, and you can make it a different texture. Um, that's not a problem. I, I, you're going smooth up here. Um, if your architect chose to, he could do a bit of a skip trowel there. So there's um, a little bit contacts, of texture, cause not yeah. much, but uh, um, and this, you know, this being your planning. Yeah. Um, and your windows would be somewhere up here. Okay. Uh, I'm comfortable with that. I mean that that we've done in the past. We've had projects do it, and uh, yeah, most this can be a problematic there. if it's like on an outdoor patio. Uh, it won't affect you where chairs hit it, sure, because they will bust the color coat off it. Chip it or yeah. but that's not what we have here, so that that's good. Okay, um, um, and I do like the. I appreciate you saying I like this consistency between the two. Yeah. So the architect really had had tried to stay true, and then we were attempting to potentially paint it. And I'm actually the one that said, "Hey, if we're going to change this, I would like to maybe just go flat finish." So he was trying to stay as close to the original vision, and I'm sort of the one pushing. So he would more. paint it a color, correct? Oh, he, we're, he, we're he still just paint it a color. He yeah he he proposed that we that we foam out an inch or two. Oh. Down here. And then go smooth and then underneath, and then paint, and then paint the finish. Yeah, on a smooth stucco. Correct. Yeah, that was his uh, yeah. worker worker. That was suggestion. his compromise. Correct. Yeah, and I said, well, let's let's try this, and I think this may be a 
combination of all of the of all of nice. the above. Yeah. Um, but I think from the street scene, um, uh, it'll work all right. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm worried about you know you've got your walls in now. If you do fur it out, you're going to end up with some kind of a stucco ground down here and a bigger gap from the stucco to the um, slab. Okay. And it does become problematic. Normally, you kick the slab out another inch and a half because mm. um, you don't want moisture coming up from underneath. Right. Um, if there's a lip. Okay. So. Uh, um, back to staff on that. I'm comfortable. Um, okay, so a five pound, a five pound foam, or, or like foam cornice set at four, Same four exact feet height. or the height of the, the top the of it. The exact height was always okay. figured because I'm sure he lined he lined it up with the uh, mutton on the windows. Okay. So you can. Uh, it's going to want to be. You lined up with yeah. Yeah, your window style. So it's going to be right there. So okay. this will look like a continuation of that line. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and then that would be painted to uh, to pull out one of the uh, an accent so, from the. New and style. Bart, you can do that. The, you can the, do that coping on a radius. Yes. Okay. So your, your coping will be above the color, so it'll yeah. be your wall color. But it'll allow that color to come up and die underneath it. So it'll look like it could have been uh, terracotta or uh, ca uh, cast stone or whatever. Okay. And um, I think it's compromised, but I think it's it's acceptable. Are, are you thinking uh, this line I'm looking at right here between the stucco and the stone, that the coping would be centered on that line or sitting above uh, I think the, the architect's going to want that coping right in line with the uh, window mullion. And then the paint right below it. It's only that coping's about that thin, which isn't probably going to be a whole lot different than the mullion on the windows. A little bit more, but sure. Um, who's the architect on this? It's, uh, Saunders and Wyatt, uh, Jared Dudley, and Niall Saunders. I don't know who poured. Okay. Yeah. We, we've utilized them a lot because of their dental familiarity. And I wouldn't even be opposed. Um, I don't think it's necessary. There's no link that's crazy long. No, there isn't. So many, so many storefront doors. That um, I was almost thinking that... We don't allow um, uh, crack control in the stucco mm -hmm. control for riglets, but sometimes when we do these kind of things, you can hide it. We'll break it with an expansion joint, so there's a vert. But it looks like four but feet's about as not even four feet in length of each section. So I'd say I wouldn't even bring that up. Yeah. We'll bring that up. Yeah, here's what I'm saying. I mean, I'm thinking second Normally story, would, we're good. Um, there's just no place to need it. You know, you'd, you'd put vertical uh, joints in it so it looked like it was pieces of tile. Of oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Doesn't occur on this, so. Okay. All right. Well, are you around tomorrow? I am. Because we're going <laughs> to probably be getting stuff to you immediately because... Yeah, this is one way to keep the construction phase moving. Yeah. Um, and uh, five one has standard... I mean, these come in 12-foot whatever lengths. Yep. Um, and they're bendable. Okay. Great. And I think who we work with, uh, because they... Because of the detail that they did up on the, uh, the balcony... Yeah, that they're going to be familiar with all of that. So, oh, this will be easy because compared to that. Yeah. All right. Great. That chorus uh, detail. All right. Well, I appreciate the feedback. This is helpful, and I think that we're going to get what we want in terms of the detail, and and we'll still even see some yeah, cost savings from the removal of the of the 
thing, but more importantly, that that we'll intersection's going to be nice because you're building. Yeah, and then the two. Is, other it, ones is there a project? The There's a project going in on the vacant lot that there started is. that process. Yeah, they uh, have construction drawings finished, but they and have been approved by Coastal because um, their lots bisected by the Coastal Zone. But they have an affordable unit in that building, so before we can issue building permits, they have to complete an affordable housing agreement with the council. And that's similar to Santiago in that it's, um, is it st- is it commercial? Is it mixed? It's mixed it is mixed use. use. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Commercial ground floor and residential. But Fun. Yeah. Fun. Um, I actually have a random question. If we wanted to uh, start the process of petitioning for maybe an additional crosswalk on the west side of El Camino Real because we have to kind of walk around in different things. Is there a process by which? At the off-ramp location? Um, no, the other direction towards okay. the, the vacant lot. There's, as, as the Santiago, or the, uh, the golf cart building has gone up for sale and we hope it would be great for our neighborhood if more mixed use and other things. But right now we have to cross the off-ramp, cr- cross El Camino Real, cross, Again, and there also has complications with the freeway on ramp. There, uh, that if there was an ability to, if we're parking on the very west southwest part of our lot and needed to go across the street, or we have our workers that are ever going to want to go eat at MRK or different places, there's a lot of so you want just a crosswalk on your side of the off ramp. No, there is that. But in, yeah, it, pull up the map here. If, if they, mid block, is it a mid block crosswalk? Um, I don't think Zach will go for mid block. He do it down at the. It would have to be even at Cordoba. Down, uh, yeah, Cordoba. Yeah, I Zach's probably going to look at that, and I, given the speeds on that El Camino Real, I don't know if he'd go for okay. that. Okay. Currently, if we wanted to go eat at MRK Public, as an example. We have to cross the freeway off ramp, cross here, cross back. See, that, I was asking, yeah, that is that's not ideal. I'll go yeah. through with you there. Oh, and look at the the angle's not right to put it here. But, I mean, there's there's a lot of moving cars moving fast in and around there. That it's that dangerous. It is. El Camino is a dangerous street, actually. So. I, I don't anywhere to the north because there is no yeah. there. The only other uh, formal cross is all the way down at Ralph's, but yeah. it's between where we are and where Ralph's is. Uh, even at Zebra House and some yeah, of the other. They could probably places. use the exercise, though. I hate to say well, it. They've been they've been struggling with all those intersections. Oh. And I realize you can't you can't make an intersection in a place like a Camino Real, but but I I don't know if there's a that Ralphs and delineators and everything that's been a subject of debate and arguing for years. For yeah, somewhat related to that. So the the process would be they uh, engineering um, evaluates the number of pedestrians so right that it counts <laughs> right and and they it has to pass a certain threshold before they'll consider um, adding crosswalks. So. Um, <laughs> Currently, would, there's not very I'd many because there's only yeah. a, ga- a gas station on the other side. So but as, as that increases, active, yeah. yeah. So I wouldn't, I, if I, I wouldn't recommend filing that petition no. now. I'd okay. wait until those businesses are operational and then okay. see what the counts are through public works and um, and whether they're hitting that threshold. Understood. All right, that's helpful for me to tell my wife, basically. <laughs> <laughs> tell her more steps. More better. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Okay. Um, okay, great. Well, then we will. Um, we've heard the feedback. I'm going to call as soon as I leave right now, unless there's more to discuss. Um, well, if you want to do it at staff level, that's fine. But if you want to take the zoning, just invite us to come and we'll look at the colors at the same time. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Rather than bringing it back here. Okay. When is that? So you don't have to do another meeting. Um, I'd have to look at the calendar so we'll, we'll start by when you get me information and then either way I'll loop you into the timelines and considerations and there. the painting would be the last phase but even if you could approve the detail and all of that so that they could continue the uh, the stucco component of that then the painting would be much further down the road if there's we want to wait to have the paint approved okay okay but the detail would be the most important part because they're hoping to throw on the uh, the color coat here in the next couple of weeks. Okay. So. 
All right. I was trying to find. Uh, Thanks, animals. Sorry, we can't uh, just yeah. delete it. Yeah, five pounds just one of many. Okay. Um, they were the first ones to get into it years ago. Understood. Okay. Can I take a picture of your of your amazing? He'll just give it to you. You can oh. have it. Hey. No charge. I'm not going to keep it. <laughs> you know that that's the general shape, and uh, yeah, it's a standard coping. Yep. All right. Okay. Thank you again. Yeah, thanks, Ray. We'll be in touch. Thank okay, Chris. Nice to meet you. And thanks for bringing that for us. Yeah. Um, let's see here. That closes old business, oral written communications. We have none, and we have an adjournment. Let's. Okay, yeah, I'll move we adjourn to September 11th. Is that when we want to, Jonathan? Mm -hmm. that, yes. Okay. 3 p.m. here in the community room at City Hall. Second. All hey. in favor? Aye. Aye. Adjourn. Yeah. <laughs> Jennifer did a good job on her staff report. Yeah. That was well written.